Welcome to Take Two Radio. We are pleased to bring you interviews with people in the entertainment and music industry, discussions and recaps of the four remaining daytime soaps, that's The Bold and the Beautiful, The Young and the Restless, General Hospital, and Days of Our Lives, as well as various other shows. For upcoming and previous shows, check Take2Radio.com, that's with the number two, and you can find us on Blog Talk Radio, iHeart Radio, iTunes, and other streaming apps. Follow us on social media at Take Two Radio, and thanks for listening. And good evening, everyone. Welcome to Take Two Radio. I'm Pam, your host, and I feel like I'm lost because this is not a second or a fourth Thursday. How about you guys? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm all kind of confused. <laughs> yeah. It's just a weird Thursday. <laughs> I just oh follow the black arms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, tonight I have uh, joining me Anthony and Candace and David, and I don't know where Carolyn is, and hopefully she's okay. She was supposed to call in, but. Um, we're super excited for our guest tonight, and it's Jen Lilly, and I'm sure that anybody listening out there, I would say probably at least 95% of the people know who Jen Lilly is. Um, she plays Teresa Donovan on Days of Our Lives, and she has done a ton of like Hallmark movies and mm-hmm. Lifetime movies, and she was on General Hospital for a little while. So you had to have seen her here, there, or everywhere, right? Yep, yeah. totally. She became a household name instantly. Yeah, for when real. She stepped into the maxi role. Anthony Yep. Yeah, I, you know, and it's funny that I didn't know, of course, who she was when she joined General Hospital as Maxi. Um, but after watching her on there, and I don't remember, like, the time frame, if it was, I think was she, was she was still on General Hospital. I caught her on, um, do you guys watch the Discovery ID channel? Yes. Sometimes. Okay. So, but you're familiar with, you know, I married an axe murderer thing mm-hmm. type yes. whatever. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I happened to catch her on one of those things, and I think it was on there. It was on. It was called Disaster Date, and I was like, "Oh my God, there is Jen Lilly." <laughs> it's the voice. She has a very recognizable voice. Um, that even if you know, even if she's in wizard scales and and you know blue hair, you're gonna know it's her. Oh come on, the eyes alone. The eyes. Absolutely. She's got huge, huge eyes. Oh, looks like there's Carolyn. All right, you're late to the table, Carolyn. You have a fine. Oh dear. <laughs> How many shots of tequila? How many shots of tequila? <laughs> Ah, uh, no, that's not a fine. Unless you're buying them for us. <laughs> then it's going to cost you. <laughs> yeah, yes. you, have an, you have an event this weekend, don't you? Yes, I, I do. do. I do. How excited are you? <laughs> Very excited. <laughs> oh. Well, this yeah, is Carolyn's um, first event she's going to, so yes. guys, like, <laughs> what advice do you want to give her? Um, be yourself. Have fun. Yeah. <laughs> be, Don't be yourself, call them have by fun. their character name. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't definitely do that. And I think the biggest one is live in the moment. Just oh, live yeah, in the yeah, moment. Yeah. And don't it's like a wedding. The time goes by so fast. You know, you plan and plan and plan, and then, you know, uh, when it's all done, you say, oh, I miss this, I miss this. Yeah, you got to. Well, yeah, and that's down. what I was going to tell, oh, tell you is that, you know, even if you made notes for yourself, like once you get there, you're like so, ah, you know, you forget <laughs> half of the things you want to say. Yeah. Um, 
and and then you kick yourself in the butt when you leave there, you know. But you have to kind of you got to let that go because it happens to everybody. Um, you know, like sometimes there was a time that I went and met like this Italian singer that I absolutely love, and after I met him. When I walked away, I said to my daughter, what did I say? <laughs> <You know? laughs> did I sound coherent? Was I, was I okay? <laughs> you know? The great thing and about, the about are, her event yeah, the is the guys are, are, go ahead. the guys are really friendly, and they're, really, they're going to they're yeah. be working to put you at ease as much as you're going to be wanting to sound brilliant and intelligent and sexy and wonderful, you know. <laughs> Um, especially William. William is such a, a friendly, in, interesting person. In oh, five okay. minutes, you're going to feel is. really at ease. He yeah. he really is. Cause they really okay, are guys, strangers. I think I mean, that we have oh. our super wonderful guest. Is this Jen? <laughs> it is. <laughs> How are it's you? It's the <laughs> super busy woman that we love. Hello, Can you Jen. hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, perfect. My hairdresser and I were laughing because I'm literally, my head is in the sink. (laughs) I'm at the salon. I was like, this is the only time there won't be two screaming kids in the background. (laughs) I have two under two. She was like, like, listen, it's better than the alternative. It's fine. They'll love it. Oh my gosh, that is so funny. The you know what the only thing that would be better if I was doing the same thing while doing this interview, but mine is actually you know, tomorrow we with the hairdresser. One like that. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> totally schedule one like that. It's a long if session. I would have known, I could have done it for today instead of tomorrow. So, well, oh you'll gosh. have to warn me next time. <laughs> my blonde roots were like out of control, so. <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm the blonde that dyes my hair brown. It's weird. I, anyway, that is funny. That is funny. And yeah, yeah. And you can pull off both colors, which is great. I mean, Thank I you. can see you doing. Even have you ever done red? I have, yes. and it looks it looks good because I'm Irish. But okay, there you go. It, so I try to. Oh, do it. Oh, <laughs> she wants me to be like blonde. She's she, yeah. Anyway. Uh, well, attention, Dave, in hair? case they wanted to be Irish doppelganger. Mm-hmm. I know. <laughs> well, why, why don't we start out? Because I have, I have all my co-hosts today decided to participate. Because why? Because Jen Lily was calling in, so that's why. Right. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> I have David, I have Carolyn, I have Anthony, and I have Candace all with me. So oh my goodness. You know Hi, that. guys. <laughs> Hi. It's like I'm on the talk or the chew. Yeah, right? There we go. <laughs> yeah. No, I'd rather table. be the talk. I'd rather be the talk. So. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right, we'll go with that. <laughs> but um, first off, I want to say that I love everything you do, whether it's movies on Hallmark or Lifetime or soap, whatever. You're always entertaining. You're professional. You're beautiful, even with your head in the sink, I'm sure. <laughs> and <Thank you. laughs> I'm going to say professional, especially in the setting that I'm in right now. <laughs> Thank you. That's very sweet, though. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just say I'm a big fan, and then everybody Thank here you. is as well. Thank you, guys. And you're welcome. Now, why don't you give us a little bit of background um, before we start questioning you to death and tell <laughs> us a little bit <laughs> how you became interested in being an actress and a singer, like which came first? Oh, wow. You know? um, yeah, um, what came first? Yeah, that's a tricky question. Um, basically, like, I I grew up singing. I grew up having an interest in singing. Um, you know, and when I was little, I was like, I'm going to be a singer when I grow up. But then I realized I'm pretty stage fright, so I kind of just shelved that. And then um, I led worship and stuff in my church for my church youth group. Um, and so I always sang in church, which, like, every singer does. <laughs> so that's my singing roots. And then when I went to college, I – fully thought that I was going to be like either a lawyer because I, I really care about children's advocacy um, or a, what did I want to be? A court interpreter 
a lawyer or the myriad of jobs I thought I would do, maybe a geologist, which is random, but I love science, and or a teacher. And then <laughs> none of those are right. You're, you're just all over the role. place. <laughs> all over the place, um, which is maybe why acting makes sense, because I'm like, I just like to try on different people's jobs all the time. But, um, yeah, so then in college I was walking, I went to University of Virginia, and I was walking around grounds, and I saw a bunch of posters for um, open auditions for a film called The Loss of Life. Um, which was later destroyed after the first screening, like the computer dropped and they hadn't backed it up. And so it was a brilliant film that actually co-starred Alexis Ohanian, who's the founder of Reddit, who's Serena Williams' husband. Um, funny, like so random. We were friends in college. <laughs> and she and I were in the film. And anyway, I did the open audition, ended up booking the female lead. And I was like, uh-oh, but also really excited, but also terrified. Like, what did I do? Because I, I think it was kind of a dare to myself. And then I got on set and I was like oh I'm not afraid of cameras I'm just afraid of audiences so that's how I got into acting and now I'm you know going back into the singing and and just getting over my fear so there we go I'm just gonna have to get over the stage right wow (laughs) all that's flashing before my eyes as you're talking about it (laughs) what a way to get to where you are now and um yeah Thankfully, thankfully, you got over the stage, right? And, you know, you're with us now, and we just, like I said, we just love you. So uh, are you comfortable with the work that you do? Like, have you ever watched your own work? Oh, yeah, I always watch it. Um, When I first started watching, it's kind of how I am with singing right now, where I'm like, oh, do I sound like that? oh, weird, um, you know, and it's uncomfortable. But now when I'm watching myself, it's, it's very weird because my manager always laughs at me because, he, like, when I do comedy I forget or anything, I forget that I'm watching myself. Like, I've gotten so used to watching it because, you know, when you do soap operas, you get to see yourself every single day, so you get over it pretty quickly. You're like, oh, there's me again. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I got over it, and now it's weird because I watch it and because I change my hair color all the time like I'm doing right now, I – forget that it's me and so my manager always laughs at me because when I watch myself do comedy I laugh at myself and he's like you know it's really weird that you laugh at yourself and I'm like yeah but it's so funny (laughs) but then I remember that it's me and he's like I don't know whether you're a narcissist and I'm like I don't know I I think it's funny because I don't know what I'm doing when I'm doing it so then when I watch it back I like laugh at my own self I'm like I'm so nerdy (laughs) <laughs> Case in point, reinforced by the fact that I laugh at myself. He's like, Yeah, you are. Anyway, so yeah, but it's, it's weird. I don't feel like I'm watching myself when I watch myself. And then with singing, I'm I'm just not getting used to it. But it's a process. <laughs> yeah, well, that you know, it's good that you're comfortable with it because a lot of people aren't. They refuse to watch themselves. And I think yeah. it helps you in the long run if you do. Oh, for sure. Oh, for sure, because you're your own worst critic, and so if you can figure out, like, oh, maybe I shouldn't do that, or or you end up learning to accept things about yourself that you're just never going to get rid of. Like, I hold my mouth in very weird ways, and there's nothing I can do about it. There's no, I don't know, unless I got a lot of Botox, but then I wouldn't be able to act because I wouldn't be able to be yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What you going to do? Brady, I, I am I very have, angry I've right now. <laughs> 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 yeah, you'll you'll have to preface your first line with yes, I'm very angry right now, or have somebody in the background saying, okay, and here is whatever part you're playing. She is going to be mad now, so watch. <laughs> you know, <I'm> saying, yeah. <laughs> but um, you've you've done like I said, a ton of movies, and a lot of them have been on Hallmark, The Spirit of Christmas, A Dash of Love, Harvest Love, The Wedding Do-Over, and now part of Hallmark's June Weddings theme, you'll be starring in Yes, I Do with Marcus Rosner on June 30th. So tell us about it, the movie, your character, what you can without giving too much away. Oh, yeah. Um, So it's kind of like Runaway Bride with Julia Roberts, except I'm (laughs) marrying the same groom and running away from the same groom every time, um, played by Marcus Rosner. So, so yeah, so Charlotte, my character, she, she's what she, she claims to be allergic to weddings. And basically she, she keeps leaving James at the altar because she has panic attacks. And I don't think she's afraid of commitment. Um, I think she's just afraid of failing and she's, 
very unassuming and doesn't really think that she's worthy of being loved by such an amazing guy or something. You know, you never kind of figure out, like, what her deal is. But it's very funny. She breaks out in hives and sneezes and, like, has, like, a very intense physical reaction to weddings. So she keeps leaving James at the altar. And um, poor Marcus Rosner, his character is so sweet. And I think that he stays with Charlotte because they clearly have a good foundation and he – I think he just understands that she really does love him and she, she's trying so hard to get over the phobia because she wants to be with him. She just can't get through the ceremony. So in the beginning of the movie, she, um, she starts freaking out, right? So it's like it opens like wedding number one and then wedding number two. And then, you know, and then her wedding, the next wedding is like a month away. And, and you know, they're really rooting for it to like happen this time. And she's already kind of freaking out. She's already breaking out in hives. And so she brings him to lunch and she's like, hey, can we – can we just wait like a little teensy, you know, a little bit longer. And he's like, no, it's a no go. I, I can't do it, Charlotte. Like I've, I've, I've been so patient with you. And so the whole movie is about her trying to get over her fear and win him back and prove to him that like, she really can get married and she really does love him. And so it's, it's kind of like the girl chases boy a little bit. And then um, Jessica Lowndes plays a, a girl named Nicole, who is his ex-girlfriend who uh, is trying to judge Charlotte in a, for a contest because Char- Charlotte is a chocolatier and uh, Nicole, which is Jessica's character, runs a magazine to nominate like the best chocolatier uh, in the nation. And so obviously when she comes on the scene, she's meeting Charlotte, but then she runs into James and lo and behold, his ex-girlfriend's back. So that's the premise and it's really fun. Well, I'll tell you, if this Marcus Rosner's character was a real-life guy, that's definitely a keeper, <laughs> you know? Um, that's exactly that. what I said. Yeah, like, that's marriage based on commitment alone. He's got the commitment thing down. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, you get the best parts in these movies. I just, I, I've not missed one of them, and I'm definitely not going to miss, yes, I do. Um. It sounds like it's going to be a very fun movie. It so is really fun. My, is it? Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine because you again, when you're telling the story, you can picture it in your head. I'm just that type of person. When reading a book, I can picture these things in my head. So you did very well with it. <laughs> Thank you. And Charlotte, I mean, she's very Bridget Jones. You know, have you ever watched Renee mm-hmm. Zellweger and Bridget? She's just very like <laughs> that girl. She's just a hot mess, and you're like. You messed up so much, but for some reason we really like you. So that's Charlotte. She's just like this lovable mess up. So it was really was really fun for me to play. And I tell you, I love Bridget Jones. I just watched one of her movies, you know, Bridget Jones Diary the other day. And every time it's on any of the sequels, I watch them all because I just you've got to fall in love with the character, like you said. It's just. You're rooting for her, and then, again, you just want to slap her upside her head and, oh, my God, why did you do that, you know? <laughs> and yeah, I love every time she messes up and she has, like, just her foot in her mouth. It's, like, the funniest thing. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I love how she tells, like, uh, minus one pound, madly in love, blah, 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 and then she'll be, like, yeah. gain 25 pounds, smoke 52 cigarettes, you know? <laughs> I know. I, like Charlotte's not like that quirky, but she reminded me of Bridget Jones, just somebody that you're just like, oh, why? <laughs> why? <laughs> so my last question before I let my crew on you, um, my question kind of goes hand in hand with David's question for you. So I'll ask this, and then he can ask his first question. So with you, Cameron Matheson. Ryan PV, Allison Sweeney, Jack Wagner, and probably others I can't think of at the moment, all being on Hallmark now in movies, it would be so cool to see you guys in one movie together. So if that oh were to happen, what would the movie be called and what part would you like to play in it? <laughs> Man, I don't even know what... It would have to have some name that was, like, very soap opera, right? Like, right. <laughs> like The Setting Sun or, like, <laughs> love, love. All My Children on Our All Lives. All My Love. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, love and, love and, 
love and loss. All my beautiful bold things. <laughs> <laughs> so um i don't know i feel like i'd have to have like a really soapy title and then again i feel like i would just want to play like just the mess i just love playing like the quirky girl you know i just i just love playing the lovable loser so i i think i'd go for that you do it so well my dear <laughs> 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 David, you could go ahead with your first question since, like I said, it kind of goes hand in hand with mine. It, it does. Hi, Jen. Hi. So if you could select your own leading man for one of your Hallmark movies or any other movies, who would it be and why? Okay, well, I have to say that now it's going to be Marcus Rosner because he's such a gentleman. Um I'm also rooting for Eric Marsoff to get on Hallmark, but yes, <laughs> yes, right? Don't you love Eric Marsoff? And he's—I he, mean, the Hallmark audience would love him, but Marcus Rosner is such a gentleman, and he's kind of neck and neck with Brendan Penny for me. But Marcus, <gasps> uh, takes the cake. love him. Yeah, Marcus takes the cake though. He is such a gentleman on and off screen, and he—we work really well together. Um, he's really good at picking up my subtleties. And um, he's just such an interesting, in-depth guy. I really enjoyed working with him, and um, I just thought he, he was just such a gentleman. And that's all I can say. He's such a gentleman, and I, I can't – he's so classy, and I can't appreciate that more in the Hollywood industry. So, Marcus Rosner, Well, again. I don't know if you can answer this, and I'm, I'm going to interrupt David before he goes to his next question because now I'm curious. Um, Brendan – or Marcus, best kisser. Uh, I mean, Hallmark kisses are kind of not real kisses. They're, <laughs> you know, they're so choreographed that I couldn't say. <laughs> okay, we'll let you go on that one, David. You yeah. go with your next question. <laughs> My next one. Okay. Well, since you brought up Eric, Mart's off. Yeah. Is Teresa definitely through with Brady, or is there more? Or do oh, you no. find more? For She's always going to love Brady, sadly. I mean, I think girlfriend needs to, like, you know. I, I think I think she's too good for Brady at this point, but as Jen Lilly, but Teresa's always going to love Brady, always. I think so, too. <laughs> That huh? is true. She might need a couple of the 12 steps. <laughs> For Brady, I mean, she's off drugs, but I don't know. Yeah. She needs a new man. I mean, how about her? I'd be good with Xander. That would be interesting. Or um, Chad. Shake it up. Who said that last week, guys? Right? <laughs> <laughs> It's yeah, well, we were show discussing, so far in advance. discussing the soap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'd like to start a petition for Teresa and Xander to, to, you know, to heat it up. Yeah, I saw a lot of people say that on Twitter. I was like, oh, okay. Like, I had never even thought about that. He's a nice guy, Paul Pelfer, the actor. He's phenomenal. Well, thank you, David, mm-hmm. for your questions. Carolyn, you're up next. Oh, <laughs> hi, Jen. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. It's uh, uh, great that you're on the show. I'm so excited. I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm so nervous. Um, uh, my first question is, now you are a new mom, um, which do you find easier to do, a soap opera or a movie? Oh, a movie, for sure. Anything is always oh. going to be easier than a soap opera. Soap operas oh, are okay. so difficult. You You shoot, oh, my God, you shoot... 220 pages a day and so you're shooting 40 to 50 pages of your own dialogue a day it's like you're in finals in college and you only get one take and they do want you to be word perfect and you get one take so there's nothing harder than soap operas and acting like period Mm -hmm. there's nothing harder because if you don't bring the emotion and you don't cry in that moment then guess what you didn't do your job whereas in movies or any anything else you have so many takes Mm-hmm. Yeah, it makes okay. it a lot easier. 
And soaps are so time consuming. And movies are like three weeks and you're done. Mhm. Mm-hmm. So. Well, that that um, that answers my question. Being a new mom, you want all the time you can get, right? <laughs> yes. And, yeah. Um, and do you have any advice for uh, young mothers uh, juggling a career? Well, no, but if they have advice for me, let me know. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, you know, preschool is amazing. I would say preschool is amazing, but at the same time, um, you know, all the same things that we all know, like common sense. If you can nap when they nap, nap when they nap. And then right. drink coffee, and as soon as they go to bed, like, I, that's when I get a lot of work done from, like, 7.30 p.m. to midnight, you know. Ugh. It's just. I don't know if anybody has tips for me. I'll take them because right now I have two, and it's um, it's just I don't know. It's like you know, you go from one kid to two. It's like going from one to ten. It's it's yeah. <laughs> it's it's like madness. And so so then again, then you end up doing interviews when you're getting your hair washed in the sink because. <laughs> you know? Well, you're def- definitely a multitasker. My goodness. <laughs> Got so much going on. Um, well, let me. I want to just say real quick. With, I had four kids, so when I went from <laughs> one to two, I know exactly what you're talking about. But once you go from two to three to four, well, it doesn't matter anymore. You're just like used to it. <laughs> really? So, <laughs> yeah. Like my mother-in-law had five, right? My husband's one of five, and I'm one of four. But I'm one of four spread out. So there's a 13-year spread between my old, the oldest and the youngest in my family. My mother-in-law had five within seven years. I'm like, Donna, how on earth? She's like, oh, the house is always messy. And I'm like, oh, okay. Because my house is super cool. But still, I still am like, that doesn't even matter. Like, how did you keep them alive? I mean, how did you <laughs> forget about them thriving. How did you keep them alive? <laughs> God, I, uh, I mean, literally, I was like, did you just have, like, a bouncer, and you strap them into high chairs? I mean, like, what was your, did you just give them Benadryl? I mean, like, what did you do, like, in a real way? Like, how, how did you do it? And it's not like she had a nanny, but, I mean, I guess she had family nearby, but I don't know. I mean, I don't know how you do it if you don't have family nearby. I don't have family in California. The nearest family for me is, like, 3,000 miles away. What are you going to do? It's not right. good. Well, I think schedule is the biggest thing, especially when you have multiple yeah. children. So sticking to a schedule helps yeah, out for sure. a lot. Yeah, I'd agree. Yeah, I'd agree. Yeah. That. yeah, eat at the same time, you know, nap at the yeah. same time, go to bed at night at the same time, take a bath at the same time, you know. So, yeah, yeah. that's how you kind of get through it. Yeah. And then when you, <laughs> then the next thing you know, they're like 20 years old, and you look at them and you say, uh, how did you get here? How did you get to be this age? You know, <laughs> that's when yeah. you start thinking back on things, and you think to yourself, like you just said, "How did you make it out alive?" You know. <laughs> yeah, parenting is not for sissies, that's for sure. <laughs> and then you know, things oh don't gosh. gross me out anymore either. You know, you just right. You, they don't gross you out anymore. Yes. Enough. Yeah. Enough. <laughs> <laughs> and Carolyn, was that your last question? Um, you have such uh, good chemistry with Casey Moss on days. Um, are you good friends you. off the him. show? Oh my gosh, you off- totally, 100%. Like, yeah. I'm friends with the whole cast. Love them all dearly. I stay in touch with all of them. I just visited the set the other day to say hello. Oh, okay. So, yeah, he and he is such a good kid. And um, would you collaborate on anything pertaining to your musical talents with with Casey? Or what? Have I you, would you would you um, do any collaboration on any of your musical talents with uh, Casey? Because he he sings as well, right? He does sing as well. I mean, maybe I'd be open to it. It just depends. Like I feel like our styles are very different. Mine's pretty sixties, so maybe. Yeah. Did I, I mean, did I see somewhere like that you band setting. Yeah. <laughs> did, did I see somewhere that someone asked about you rapping? Do you rap? 
<laughs> and it's coming up. I do not. I do not. Oh, that was actually did something for, I did as a joke. Okay, so I did as a joke. My first year on Days of Our Lives, I married a Scotland who plays Anne, who, like, we all know from a million comedies, um, mm-hmm. Legally Blonde, like, all these things, right? She's, like, she's completely brilliant. So she and I are really good friends, and um, we decided that Christmas we would make a rap, um, the Days of Our Lives rap, to the tune of um, In, In the Club <laughs> by 50 Cent. And so we did a spoof, and we, we recapped the entire year. Because there were the most ridiculous things happened that year. And so we did a wrap on it. And then we, we dressed up and we got a green screen. I mean, it was like a very expensive little music video we made. We were like, wow. Like we ended up splitting the cost. But we were like, okay. So, whew. like, I don't know that we want to do that again. But it was, like, so much money. But, um, but, yeah, that was our cast. That was our gift to the cast and crew. And then we decided to put it out on YouTube for the fans. And it went, like, viral. But then I ended up taking it oh. down. So I, took, I took a law class. And I was like, oh, I was worried because I didn't get permission from 50 Cent to do it. But then I ended up putting it back up because I realized that um, you can do spoofs. And it's like there's total legal yep. – there's no copyright infringement. So anyway, long story short, that's what they're talking about. And it is epically hilarious. But it's meant to be hilarious. So that's me and Meredith. <laughs> really <being> silly. <laughs> Thanks. This is the best video ever. It, yeah, it got so much buzz on all the boards. It was like, oh my god, yeah. this has to be their second career. We wanted salt and pepper parts, you know, salt and pepper in Salem. Yeah, mm-hmm. hilarious. Well, Aunt Candace, Candace, you'll have to you'll have to show me where it is. <laughs> oh, I just oh, I'll send you, you the link. We'll send you oh, link. Okay. okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks, Carolyn. And now, Candace, you're up. Okay. Hey, Jen. Hey. So, so it's actually funny because one of my questions was regarding the Days of Our Lives right. rap song. And I wanted to know, because that was four years ago, but that was epic. Yeah. I mean, still much talked about. So we get a, a sequel? I mean, I mean, we would honestly have to do a GoFundMe or something because it cost us three thousand dollars. <laughs> not even kidding. It was so expensive. Oh my god! We like this is quite the out of really? control Christmas present. It was so expensive. So. Oh man. Maybe. I mean, maybe. But I'm not gonna make promises. <laughs> so. So that's a fifty-fifty right there, folks. So I'm gonna start a GoFundMe. Yeah. Use my babysitting money. Hey, is going to help? I'm going to. That was like the best. For those who haven't seen it, you need to see it. So, okay. Well, and so, and I, would, I, would bet, I would bet anything that the fans would chip in for that. I would bet anything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they would. They would. <laughs> well, well, especially if we could get it like a lady. And Meredith again. That was like, it was so funny. It was so, so funny. Uh, but we're crazy. <laughs> Just come get me a snug if we're never related blood. Okay, sorry. I had to say that. <laughs> yeah, I wrote it. I wrote it. So you're welcome for that. <laughs> yeah, that's one. Ever. Um, so funny. Um, <laughs> my other question is I work with children all the time, and I think they're the best things ever. I'm just going to put it out there. The children are the best yeah. things ever. So what made you decide to be a foster parent? That's such a great question, and you know it's my favorite question. So (laughs) wind me up. Here we go. Um, (laughs) Oh, golly. Well, first of all, years ago I would watch the news, and as we all know, the news is very depressing, unfortunately. And um, for me personally, I started getting a lot of anxiety, and I don't struggle with anxiety. Um, You know, I'm a Christian, and, and, and not that Christians can't struggle with anxiety, but I really do have a lot of peace. And so... I realized that when I was watching the news, I was getting really anxious about everything, and um, it bothered me. So I, I felt so helpless, you know, like, oh, my God, I just felt like Chicken Little, you know, like the sky is falling, the sky is falling, mm-hmm. <laughs> running around. And so finally I was like, okay, whoa, 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 take a breath. Like, let me just pray about it. And I was like, okay, <sighs> I can't solve every problem, even though I want to. Like, that's how my mind works. You know, I want to be everybody's personal, like, Wonder Woman. Um And so I was like, what can I help? What can I do? Um, And so I started researching 
just the, the issues going on in the United States and all over the world, but specifically here within my neighborhood and stuff. And I came across the foster care epidemic, and I, I knew about it because my parents kind of informally fostered in the sense that we were a safe house, and we had people that came and lived with us that were not part of our family almost always. Um, and so I had a heart for it, but then I started researching, and I, I came to find that upwards of 90% of our human trafficking victims, which is something I deeply care about, 50% of our homeless mm-hmm. population, which is something I deeply care about, um, and anywhere between 20 and 80% state by state of our prison and jail inmates came from foster care. And I was like, wow. So if you were to able to remediate the foster care system, you could make a difference on a lot of things. You know, it has a ripple effect. Um, and you're, you're, you're ending a cycle because um, foster care is such a cycle. So if you're in foster care, you're 600 times more likely than the average population to have a child who also ends up in foster care. So I decided um, mm. I could be a foster parent, and my husband and I talked about it um, in year seven and of our marriage, and he was like, I just brought that to the table. You know, seven, seventh year in a marriage is really hard, and so when we were getting into the thick of it and just talking mm-hmm. about, like, okay, let's go back to square one. Let's figure out, like, what's going on what went wrong. Like, how can we fix it? And that was something that I brought to the table. I was like, you know, I really care about the foster uh, care epidemic and crisis that's going on in our country. Nobody's talking about it. And I'm not saying mm-hmm. that we have to be foster parents, but I am saying that we need to go to, a, like, an introductory class, get the information, and then decide, like, do we want to do it? But I don't want it to be, like, a closed thing that's just off the table because we're afraid. And so he was like, okay. And so we waited a couple more years, and then two years ago we became foster parents. So that was, like, the quickest mm-hmm. thing I can say to you is that it's just something that I care about that I think influences a lot of things in society. Yeah. If only and everybody you... thought like you did. I mean, that would make such yeah. a difference in this world. No, if, if every listen, if everybody thought the way I did, we wouldn't have crime in the United States. We wouldn't have, um, we wouldn't be in a in a deficit in our country budget wise right. because we wouldn't right. be spending right. billions of dollars on our prisons, on our mental health, on all of these things. Right. If people just loved each other, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> we'd yeah. be thriving. You know. Yeah. Okay, I call for Jen for President 2020. No, Let's thank go. You. No, <laughs> thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. No, you open that up, woman. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll just, uh, you know, but that is one of the reasons I became an actor is, you know, I, I, like I said earlier, I wanted to be other things, and I was praying about it, and I really felt that the Lord just told me, you're not afraid of talking about the issues. And people listen to celebrities, you know. Right. For some reason, we give yeah. attention to people who play pretend for a living. And so, you know, if I can rally other people to maybe step out of their comfort zone and go take an introductory class that they're down at their local Department of Children and Family Services, especially now when we have all the issues going on um, with child abuse in our country, then then go do it. So there you go. Yeah. Exactly. And that was actually – a follow-up question is, you know, what would you say to your fans, to our listeners who are considering the idea of being a foster parent? Like, what tips would you give to them? What tips I would give to them is to say that there's never going to be a good time. There is never going to be a good time to parent. Like, it's not con- it's not convenient if it's biological either for a woman. Like, being pregnant is not convenient. You know what I mean? Like, you're never going to right. be ready. You just have to do it. Um and because there's an epidemic and children, they need us and our, you know, our country needs us to do this. And um, the other thing I would say is find a support group. You know, I wish I had known, like, I wish I had known in the beginning how much support you need as a foster parent because it's so mentally and emotionally trying. No one prepared me for the journey of playing middle mom, you know, because you go into these meetings with the bio parents and you have to have so much grace and compassion on them. And so many bio parents, they don't get compassion from the foster parents. You know, they're in the accusatory seat. But at the same time, foster care is meant for them to rehabilitate themselves. And if no one is cheerleading for them, then what's their motivation? You know, if they feel like they already feel like failures, they've had their kids taken away from them. Like that's like the last step, you know, before like, they already feel like failures, so to love them, but to also draw a boundary and say, 
You know, there's one of the things I had to discuss with my son who I'm in the process of adopting right now. One of the, I love his mom. I have such a heart for her, but she's a mess, you know. But one of the things I had to say to her one day, and I was crying when I told her, you know, I was just like, look, we're going to have to, because she's so young. And I said, look, we're going to have to have a really mushy conversation that's super cheesy. And I was like, but here's the thing. I love you. I probably love you more than anyone has ever loved you in your whole life. And I said, I think we can both agree that we are team our son's name, you know? And I said, we are both team this boy and we're on the same team most of the time. And we want what's best for him. And I said, I am not against you, but sometimes my primary, I said, my primary job as foster parent is to protect your son. That's the role that I've been given. And I said, and sometimes I have to protect him from your poor decisions. And I want you to know that when I do that and I have to intervene, I hate it. I am not doing it from a vindictive place when I have to write the reports on you. I am not sitting at my house laughing writing these reports. I am rooting for you. I am for you. I want you to get it together. You know, so I wish somebody had talked me through that and, and just kind of prepared me for that, like you just how to navigate playing middle mom because you really have to have a lot of grace, <laughs> but you also have to draw a line. So it's tricky. That is actually interesting because, like you said, you know, to have that open communication because at the end of the day, you, t- you know, the biological parent and you, you guys have your team action. You, your team, especially with a kid, because they're going to look at you guys as like, okay, an example of how to work together, how to work together yes. through a problem, an issue. So I like that, John. I really do like that advice. And to some, to you know, like sum up my whole, you know, segment, um, if you could sit down with Teresa over Alice's Donut <clears throat> and give her some much <laughs> needed advice, what would it be? Uh, I would just say you have suffered too much to to keep going like this. You know, you 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 need to just get over Brady. Like he is not worth it. I'm sorry. Like, that's mm-hmm. what I think is Jen Lilly. And I love Eric Martzoff, and I, I always – and I'm pro-commitment, and I'm pro-making relationships work. But at the same time, mm-hmm. I just think, you know, he – he Brady falls in love with anybody, you know? Like, he yeah. is not yeah. in it for the long haul. He, he's been married how many times? Like, you need to get some self-esteem and get some therapy for your daddy issues, you know? <laughs> And put on your big girl panties because you are strong and you can do this. If you can survive human trafficking in Mexico, you can do anything. And you need to find a man that's going to cherish you. You know, that's what all girls need. Yep. Amen. (laughs) Absolutely. So thank you, Jen. Thank you. Thank thank you, Candice. And last but not least is Anthony. Hey, Jen. Anthony from Staten Island, New York. We've talked few times over the years um yeah first I want to say first and foremost you you answered my one of my questions already which is great about your causes um I just want to say thank you um I'm I'm the fan guy of this show um I just want to say thank you from all the fans out there you're very accessible on Twitter um you're not snarky you're not snooty and I could put in a bunch of other s words there but just thank you. You share your experiences in, in a way that, and it's it's got to be the church foundation, absolutely, um, and just a faith a faith thing. So instead of the question that I was going to ask about your causes, um, can can you tell us a little bit about, you know, how you integrate faith into into Jen's life? Into what life? In, into your life, into Jen's life. Into my life? Oh gosh! Well, it drives everything. For me personally, it drives everything. I mean, everything. It's, 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 you know, I've got this situation with this infant that I've got in my house, for example, right now. And it was supposed to be one night. It was an emergency call. And then they said it was you or a homeless shelter and 10 at night. And I'm like, okay. Uh, my husband was at church, actually. Like, he's, he's in the band. So he's at band practice. And I texted him. I was like, we have a baby coming. I don't know whether it's a boy or a girl. I don't know the situation. I just know it was us or a homeless shelter, and they said it was going to be for one night, maybe four, right, while they're trying to find a more suitable home. And so I was like, okay, I can hang. It's been two and a half weeks, and, you know, I finally had to, like, tell the social worker, like, this is not fair to this child because 
he needs a lot. Like he's way behind on every milestone. And my son is also special needs. And I'm like, you know, I can't, I had to draw a line with them, but, but it, it was like navigating that has been me praying like constantly. I'm constantly kind of in a state of prayer. Like, am I doing the right thing, Lord? And then just with people, just loving them, because I think that myself included, we have all experienced a lot of hatred from the church. And I think that there is a movement going on in the Christian church in the United States and probably all over the world. But I think it's something we struggle with as Americans where people are so prideful. And um, I think we've all experienced judge like wrong, wrongfully placed or motivated judgment from the church where maybe someone like is coming from maybe a good place in their heart, but like, because they don't have an understanding of God's heart, they, they wound you. And I think that a wound from the church hurts the worst because it's like, you're supposed to know better. So, um, so in my everyday life, it just in like, because because I've been judged so hard (laughs) over the years for something that's so meaningless, you know, like even becoming an actress, I was judged so hard for that and isolated. Um, Like, how could you do that? It's so sinful. And it's like, really? Like, what are you going to say to the prostitute? You know what I mean? (laughs) What are you going to say to these human trafficking victims? Like they're victims. You do know that, right? Like they're not living that lifestyle by choice. So it motivates everything it motivates the way I see like I love people so much and and so it just motivates how I react to people and when I'm really tired and I have two kids at home that are screaming and there's a baby that has colic that's not supposed to be there and my son's like off the wall because he's two and he's special needs and I'm just sitting there ready to cry (laughs) it like causes me to regroup and be like okay okay like I'm going to choose love so that's how it influences me it's just to look at everything, not through a political lens, not through any lens other than, I mean, so cheesy, but like, what would Jesus do, you know? And, and the answer is he would love people relentlessly where they are no, and, and one, not where they're one going thing to be. To, um, one thing to add to that, you know, you hear it all the time, and I do believe in it, even though at times you struggle with it, is that the Lord does not give you more than you can handle. Yeah. Exactly. And he doesn't. Yeah. And he gives you his Holy Spirit to to like partner with you and get you through it because he's so good. So, yeah, so that's how it, I mean, just my faith influences everything I do because my my job is to love people and love them deeply and sincerely and love them where they are and not love them through some weird lens <laughs> other than God's lens, which is love. So Right. I'm um I'm a writer and I lost my eyesight 2 years ago. And I had always said up until two years ago, if I ever lost my eyes, I'd check out. I'd want to go. Yeah, and right. The, the strength that came to me. I, I mean, at some point, I was definitely at the point where I was like, if someone else helped me, God, only get, you know, I was screaming to the sky, I can't handle not even another ounce. You can't give me right. another ounce of anything. But, right. but it, it true, you know, two years later, I can honestly say, you know, there's a higher power. It doesn't matter if it's Buddha. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, an ant whatever that higher power is for, for you. Um, and we don't, we don't, it's taboo. It's too taboo right now for us to discuss it. And I love that you don't beat, you don't beat us over the head, but it shines through in a lot of your postings and a lot of, a lot of the way you interact. Um, yeah. And so I just wanted to thank you for that. Um, I didn't you. originally plan on saying that, but it also came through in tonight's conversation. Hearing you talk about the foster care experience, just, it, it, it made my heart swell to double its size. I feel like the Grinch uh, tonight. Um, Thank you. Now I'm going to go back to being a fan and ask um, for the fans. A couple of years ago, before Dave's, um, you know, where a lot of us came to know you, you stepped into a very, very pre-established role on General <laughs> Hospital. Yeah. Um, looking, looking back now, you know, six, seven years later, um, can you tell us what it felt like and what, you know, how it prepared you when you stepped into date, you know, what it felt like to first start that role. Um, and, and now that you look back on it, what you view of your work at that time and, and that time period of your life. On days or on general hospital? Well, when you stepped in, you know, there was a lot of, a lot of chatter when you stepped into that role. Um, you know, did it, did yeah. you second guess and, and, you know, and then when you stepped into days, you know, did it help you prepare or was it completely, that's oh, what I'm asking. for sure. It. Right. So, yeah. So when I got the role on general hospital, I was scared to death because 
you know, they had changed for the audition. They had changed the names. Like I didn't know I was going in for Maxi. It was just an emergency thing. And then they literally brought me down to the fitting, like right after they just told me to wait because they were like, you start at 6 a.m. tomorrow. Okay. So here's the deal. Like you play Maxi, you played the Kirsten Storms. And I knew who she was because of Xenon um, and Disney Channel. And I was like, oh my God. And then they, they basically were like, yeah, so don't freak out. Um, here's 12 scripts. And then they didn't like the other person would run in the room and literally it was like the one person would be handing me scripts. Another person would come in and say, don't overwhelm her. Don't overwhelm her. And then somebody else would be like, are you excited? Cause you're just kind of like plain faced. And I was like, I'm very excited. I'm going to freak out in the car. But right now, like I have to buckle down and, and listen because I cannot believe I'm starting this tomorrow and it's a pre-established role. And then the very last thing, so then they brought in the editor who basically gave me, like, five-page history of Maxi, you know, like, oh, by the way, she has her cousin's heart, and, like, these are the things, like, this is who this is to you. I didn't even know that um, John was my dad until I was in the scene with him, and it was already over my first scene. He was like, oh, yeah, I'm her dad. I was like, okay, good to know. You know, it was it was nuts. And and then right after I booked, the very last thing Jill Saren Phelps said to me before my first day is she called me into her office. She was executive producer at the time. And she said she put her hand on my knee. We were both on couches side by side. I'll never forget it. She put her hand on my knee and she goes, you know, she had said, don't worry. Everyone freaks out before they do a soap because it's so much dialogue and everything is one take. You know, they're intensely hard. And she goes, and then at the very thing, last thing she said to me, she goes, but we are facing cancellation, and this is the most pivotal time in this character's life. Oh, my god! I really need you to pull this off. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'm going to go vomit now. And then I remember <laughs> just the next morning being in Kirsten's dressing room and having a freak out and being like, I can't do this. I can't do this. Maybe one of the other girls can do it. And then they called me to set. And it was like, what am I going to do? Here we go. So that was nuts. And then, yes, I did second guess myself because it was early in my career and I wasn't used to seeing myself on screen ever. And because she's so thin, I was always getting tweets about how ugly I was and I was fat and all these things. And, um, you know, and it was just like, well, I'm sorry, I'm not her. I don't know what to do other than just like, I just, what, you know, what are you going to do? So I learned a lot, you know, I learned a lot about um, just like really being okay with who you are and, in, in on a deeper level, you know, because I'd already been through a lot of church drama. So like that prepared me for that. So it was kind of like mm-hmm. child's play. Oh, well, at least you guys aren't Christian saying this to me. Maybe you don't know better. You don't know that I'm actually reading these tweets and I'm like crying on the other side of the computer. But then after that, like, they prepared me to just kind of get over it. You know, it's like everyone's entitled to their opinion. And then with Teresa, like she's, she's the girl you love to hate, at least at the beginning. Right. And so it was like, it prepared me for that of just being like, you know what, if you hate me, you're kind of supposed to hate her. So I'm doing something right where I don't think I could have handled that type of criticism. So yeah, it definitely prepared me, but I was still nervous my very first day of days of our lives. And I only had like a couple lines that day and I still was freaking out because there is nothing like soap operas. I mean, like there, everything is one take and you have 40 pages a day and they are word perfect and you will get fired if you're not like on it. And so, you know, it's it's basically like good luck. <laughs> so yeah, I'm still <laughs> really nervous. <laughs> well, thank you for you know, thank you for the grace of how you handled everything up to this point. You know, the first couple of months of of your general hospital career were were trial by fire for sure. And you really, <laughs> by the time she stepped back into you know you left and she stepped back into the role, there was a good fifty fifty split of people who just wanted you to stay. And that says yeah. a lot. Uh, it does, that right there within itself says a lot. I'm a big fan of, of Nell right now in General Hospital, who's hated beyond belief. Mm-hmm. And my my mm-hmm. answer to everyone online is, that's her job. She is yeah, phenomenal then as an actress. Because if you right. can hate her this strongly, then she's doing her job. Um, yeah, we've and, had that conversation many times on our soap show, you know. <laughs> Go ahead and hate yeah, her because I mean, she's doing her job. It. I didn't get it before I was an actor. Mm-hmm. I didn't get it either because I was an audience member for 20 years or something, you know? Right, right. So I didn't get it either. Um, well, we love, we, we love seeing you on the soaps, but we also love seeing you on Hallmark, and we most mm-hmm. definitely love hearing you on this show. Please, yeah. thank <laughs> you so much for coming, and um, thank you for answering our questions with such grace and sharing your faith. You know, yeah. Thank you. 
Gosh, and and really Jen, nice. I know we're limited on time here and we've already gone over a bit, but I do have one person that called in and wanted to say a quick hello, if that's okay. Okay. Yeah, of course. And her name is Jen. Hi. <laughs> so, Jen, say hello to Jen. Hi, Jen. Um, yeah, I'm actually a Jen, too. Um, I have, I actually have a question for you. It's rather personal. Um, I'm hoping that you'll answer. Out of all the many characters that you worked with, it seems like they've all worked well. Well, so I had a, a silly, quirky question. Out of all the men actors in the entire world, if you could pick one to come do a love scene with you, who would it be and why? Well, uh, oh. <laughs> I mean, okay, since it would be super me, hypothetical. Me, it's Tatum, and I'm not an actress. <laughs> oh. Well, for me, it's, like, never going to happen because it's it's a past tense actor. So it would be Matt Damon as Jason Bourne in the first yes, Matt Bourne yes. movie. <laughs> Lucy and, and Leonardo DiCaprio in The Departed. No, for oh, me, it was okay. Matt Damon <laughs> as Jason Bourne. <laughs> In Born Identity, but the original okay. one, like wow. however many years Good ago choice. that was. <laughs> and I also, I love your work. You're phenomenal. Um, and I also have something that I'd like to say to Anthony, if that's okay. I watch, I, I listen to you. I read the blog. You are just very funny. And telling your Thank you. story before <laughs> um, <laughs> about being blind for two years, that is just an ultimate inspiration to the rest of the world. Thank you so much. Thank thank you. Wow. (laughs) Um, And and to you, Jen, I applaud everything you said about the adoption process, and I just think, Jason, I just think all in all, you're just a wonderful person. Thanks. You're welcome. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Jen, for calling in and asking your questions. Very sweet of you. You enjoy the rest of your night. Oh, absolutely. I love the show. I listen to it every week. I never oh, thank you. So I was really happy I got picked tonight. I thought it was almost not going to happen, but I'm glad it did. <laughs> and now. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Thank right. you for calling in. So he, you guys yeah. that are listening, now you know you can call in whenever. We're going to put you through. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys so much for having thank me thank you thank you hey Jen, and real quick what color is your hair yeah. now yeah. it's still well she's got to dry it we're waiting to dry it so I mean it's still the same ish color brown blondie Blond, blondie brown we're not sure we got to dry it <laughs> <laughs> green, uh, not green or pink or turquoise right <laughs> no no. no. All right. My thank mother you so much, California Jen. <laughs> okay, thank you guys for having me on. I'll talk to you guys soon. All right. Have a good night. Thank you very much. Bye. You too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bye-bye. Thank you. Wow. You know, you. we've talked to her before as well. And each time that she comes on here or she comes on another show or you read something about her mm-hmm. or whatever, just makes you love her more. She's the sweetest yeah. person in the world. Oh, my God. I mean, she's got a huge, huge heart. Just love her. She does. Yeah, if you guys go through her past Twitter feed, you know, and really go back a couple of years when she started as Teresa or back, you know, a few years longer than that when she was doing Maxi. All the haters, mm-hmm. she handled it with such grace. Um, yeah. You know, she never really, what they call, clapped back. She, you know, she took she took the best and the worst with, with a lot of grace. Um, and and uh, knowing that she's a foster mom gives me hope that the next generation of, of those behind us are going to do a little bit better than we've done, for sure. Definitely. Sure. Definitely. Wow. So, and we right, call I guess, tonight, which is awesome. <laughs> yeah. I know, I know. I wish that more people would call in, but they're so afraid to call in. You know, even if we're just doing our soap show, they're just they too shy in. or they're afraid, and I don't understand it. Um, I do understand it, and I don't understand it. Because when I used to just call into shows, um, it took a lot 
for me not to like hang up right before they answered the phone, you know, if <laughs> if I was calling in to talk to somebody, you know, one of the actors or something because you get very nervous. But if yeah, you can make that leap and do it one or two times, you'll see that they're just like us. They're so down to earth. Otherwise, they wouldn't be calling into our show. You know, Pam, That's if right. I can just make a quick suggestion. If you can make a snippet of that of, of the quick call um, and put it up for the next, you know, so that our listeners can hear it, maybe the next, you know, the next set of interviews we have, because I've gotten quite a few um, – quite a few comments on Facebook saying, I, w- I really wanted to ask this, or I love the way you handled, and I keep saying, call in, call in, call in, but that's, mm-hmm. and that's, like you said, that's the pushback I'm getting, they get all nervous, I'm going to get tongue-tied, I'm not going to know how to say it, our caller was not elegant, she was a sweetheart, but she didn't, she wasn't elegant, you don't have to be, you know, these, these no, producers, she was actors that we, yeah, she- these producers and actors that we get on here want people to be themselves. If you put a right. snippet of that up, I think it might inspire some more calls. Um, I don't know how to do that, so you'll have to tell me, but <laughs> I'd be more than happy to do it. So, um, And you mean to post where, like on the show or on Facebook? Um, what do you mean? So I, I'm going to research it tonight because I'm not sure technically exactly how to do it, but I know that you can basically take a snippet. Like you'll, re- you'll record over what we're saying right now. Um, like for, oh, you know, David knows how to do that. Yeah, and just like basically like where you introduced her, Jen, we ever call her, and then she came on, and then hearing like the first maybe 30 seconds of Jen, Jen Lily's answer will inspire other people, I think, to call in. If we can just kind of post, this is what it's like when you call our show kind of thing. Um, you know, and those of you well, out there who have messaged me and are listening, that's exactly what we want. We want you guys to call in. We'd love to have some participation from, from all you listeners. Yeah, David knows how to edit it. To, I, and, David, I'm speaking for you because you've edited before. Yeah, but you know how to edit just one piece. But then what – that would be like an MP3. So what would you do with that? You'll have to research that, Anthony. I will. You can. Yeah, I know you can upload it for me, it to, to Facebook. I'll see if I can. Um, and I'll throw it all over the place. So, okay. <laughs> especially since you mentioned me. But for our listeners out there, um, please join us at our normal time, which is next Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern time, um, for our soap show where we recap the four soaps. Um, but also we do have a guest, and it's going to be Carolina Civis, and uh, she's going to be oh. talking about <laughs> Did Antlo. you forget? <laughs> 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 she's going to be talking about um, Season 3 of Broken at Love, and if you haven't seen that yet, you really need to. Um, just put it in YouTube, and it'll come right up. The first two seasons were phenomenal. The third season is working its way same way. I mean, you are just like, okay, what's next? And so, and and look, also the blooper roll. Oh my God, so funny! You have to you have to watch that video too. So she'll be on. Um, and pardon me, but I can't think of her friend's name that's also in the series. She will be joining Carolina as well. So we'll talk to them first, and then we'll do our soap review and recap and discussion and talk about the love-hate relationship we have with it. And I'm sure you guys are going to have a lot to talk about, aren't you, next week? Absolutely. And I want to hear if Candace or Carolyn goose anybody on their soap events this week. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) We want pictures on Take2Radio.com. Absolutely. Yeah, and yeah, and wait, How wait. Let's not changing? forget. Let's not forget Candace. Candace is I, going yeah. to the at the world as the world turns event. <laughs> Want to tell them mm-hmm. a little bit about that? So basically, this Friday, Trent Dawson, who many of you as the world turns fans know as Henry Coleman, he has a movie that he's going to be on releasing, and then you know, fans was donating to help with it. 
So there's going to be some as well times alumni, and including somebody that's been on the show named Austin Peck. I don't know if y'all know him, but oh. he's going to be there. Terry Peck is going to be there. Martha Byrne is going to be there. Colleen Zink is going to be there. Then um, Van Henson is going to be there. Uh, there's some other people that's going to be there. So, yeah, this is going to be – oh, Michael Park. Hello. <laughs> I almost forgot about that. So it's going to be, you know, for those who, you know, donated, um, is going to attend. And, yeah, you know, I have to, you know, I have to go because that was my show. And I got all, I don't know why all of a sudden I got all, like, glam, like, glam, like, you know, just brushing my hair, like, you know. So, yeah, I'm going to go see. Hey. <laughs> this is my Oakdale family. So. Well, it sounds like lots of fun, and you guys get your pictures and your little blog together, and we'll put it on Take2Radio.com on the fan page, so that way you can share your experience with other fans, and they can see that these events rock. Super fun. Yes. They're super fun. You have to go to, I tell uh, to everybody, is that if there's a fan event nearby you, or, you know, if you have to make that jump, go. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to yeah. thank the, the stars, to, you know, say, you know, I love you, but don't be acting all <laughs> selfish. Like, don't do that. It's just bad for us. You know? <laughs> Makes sense. So. Some of the best times of my life were at Super Soap Weekends down in Disney. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. The all right, best. guys. All I'm right, everybody, off. thank you for your questions, and thank you to our caller, and thank you to Jen Lilly for joining us tonight, and we'll see you next week at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Take care, everybody. Bye, everybody. Happy summer. Good night. Happy weekend. <laughs>